Oh my goodness, here we are at Every Woman. I love these nights. We have four of them every year, and every year I go and say, can we have more? We have a management meeting. We're working on our calendar and it's full and there's not any room to put anything in because this is the best church that does so many things. And I go, what if we met every month? And they go, what's the next order of business? <laughs> We've got so much going, we can't fit more in. We've got to include other people besides just the girls, right? So we enjoy the heck out of these things when we have them four times a year. I want to encourage you, invite your friends next time. They don't want to miss this. I'm so glad that you're here tonight. And you'll see when it's all done, you'll, you'll be so glad that you came. I used to come to these things kicking and screaming. You know, before I really get into my message, I have something kind of funny to tell you. And it's not that funny, but I just remembered it when I was standing there. My message is kind of serious, so I feel like I need comic relief for just a moment. <laughs> all right. So you know that last song that we just did? I don't know what it's called, but the old Holy Spirit burn like a fire, that one. Well, there's this part in it that talks about river wild, running wild in me, consume me, something, you know, that part, like the part that's really built up. Well, last year I was in San Diego. Again, this has nothing to do with my message. It's just fun. Last year I was in San Diego, which is the land of outdoors. It's beautiful and you have all these sporty spice cuties that are thin and in shape running around the beach and the trails and with their headphones on and cute little ponytails bobbing back and forth as they're running all around. So I put my, um, it's just the phone. I was gonna say my iPod, but that, those are old days. I have this song on my phone and I did a little bit of jogging when people were looking and then when they weren't, I'd just kind of walk. <laughs> and I went through this kind of trail that went up this mountain and I wasn't really sure where I was going. Jeff wasn't with me. I don't know why I took off by myself. That's very unusual. I'm not very adventurous. But so I'm kind of going up this little trail up high and all of a sudden I'm at the crest of this trail and there's this wall, probably about yay high, made of stone. And the wind is blowing and I can see the ocean. Oh, it's beautiful. And about that time in the song, the music's building. Bum, 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 river wild. Something, I don't know the words. <laughs> is that what it is, river wild? River, river something. Yeah. So I hear it and I'm like, oh my gosh, Holy Spirit, I can feel you right here. The wind's blowing, I can hear the ocean through my headphones and the song's going. I kind of look around, no one's around. I step up on <laughs> the wall and I have a moment. I raise my hands and I lean my head back and the wind's blowing in my hair. Consume me. Like it's getting louder and louder. It's the best moment. And I just kind of felt something. Like I just, I don't know what it was, I felt something. So I did this. And there's a guy walking his dog. <laughs> walking his dog. The Holy Spirit has never left me so fast. <laughs> it was horrible. So now every time we sing that song, I start to get really into it. And then I think, who's listening? <laughs> who's watching? You don't know what Sanjay is gonna do. I've got this thing hooked up and it's on. He turns it on and off. He can hear me. What if he's listening? <laughs> this could be really embarrassing. Like I have this fear of reliving this moment. So there you go. Is that good? Yeah. All right. So if you ever get these embarrassing stories, you have to share them because it's what makes us human and how we survive the tough times together, right? All right. I wanna talk to you tonight about your heart. We just had Valentine's Day. It's oh so appropriate, right? I wanna talk about your heart. You know, your heart is who you are. Your heart is all about you. It's what you're made of. It's where your character is stored. Your heart is a really important place. It's where your greatest vulnerabilities lie, right inside your heart. It's where you love, it's where you trust, it's where you dream, it's where you hurt, it's where you hope, it's where you feel, your heart. It's such an important place. It's the most important part of your body. 
Did you know that the heart is mentioned 830 times in the Bible? I didn't count them all. Don't fret. I looked that up. 830 times. And what that says to me is, my heart's really important. If it's mentioned that many times, it's important. You know, we all know lots of scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your, right? Where your treasure is, your is also, right? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your. Are these coming back to you? Your heart is an important place. In Psalms, it says, hide God's word in your heart. It's a container. It's such an important container. You know, another scripture is, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. When you make the biggest choice of your life to make Jesus the Lord of your life, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. It doesn't say your mind. It doesn't say to believe in your mind, it says to believe in your heart. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that my heart is a decision maker. That's how important it is. Your heart is a decision maker, which leads me to this. Solomon tells us in Proverbs, guard your heart. Guard your heart above all else, because from it flows the course of your life. That tells me that my heart is gonna determine my future. So when I say my, I mean yours. It just doesn't sound so mean. But when I say me, I really mean you. That means your heart, what's in there, what's in your heart determines your future. Who you'll be, where you'll go, what you'll accomplish, What you'll do. What's in your heart determines your future. Again, your heart is such an important container. It ain't your mama's Tupperware. You know how big Tupperware was? It was the best thing ever when it came out. I wasn't alive. If I was, I was very young. It was orange and yellow. Remember? I still have one of those yellow bowls that my mom had, and you push the top, and it kind of has an accordion, and it goes... You have any of those, anyone in your thing? They're not cool, they don't look cool. I won't tell anyone but you guys. Your heart is way better than a piece of Tupperware. So my question to you tonight is, what's in there? What's in your heart? What's in your heart? The title of my message tonight is Junk in the Trunk. Junk in the trunk. And for those of you that aren't very good at riddles, I have a hint for you. The hint is trunk equals heart. (laughs) Is that good? I don't want any of us to get to the end of this message and go, I don't know what she meant by that trunk. (laughs) It's your heart. The trunk's your heart. Got it? Everybody with me? All right. Junk in your trunk. You know, in some ways, that's a great phrase. It depends on who you are. If you're J-Lo or Beyonce, and you've got junk in the trunk, that is amazing. (laughs) If my body looks like that, I'll take that junk any day. (laughs) Right? Junk in the trunk. It's so sought after, you guys are not going to believe this. You're not going to believe it. Maybe you already know. I just am late to find out things. They have undies. Sorry, boys. I don't have any. They have, I have, un, wait, I have undies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Moving on. They have undies that have little bottom implants in them. It's so sought after to have junk in your trunk that you can order undies with, with a bottom inside just so you too can look like J-Lo or Beyonce. So that phrase is good to some people, and then to other people that are packing on a few extra calories in their rear, junk in your trunk isn't the best. In fact, if Jeff ever says, I like that junk in your trunk, he's out. (laughs) We're done. So negative or positive, who knows? But tonight, 
who cares? All right? Tonight I want to talk about your heart and I want to talk about the junk in your trunk. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Joyce Meyer, I was listening to her the other day, and she was talking about the heart, which is great, inspired me a bit, that's always nice. But she talked about how we care so much about what our outside looks like every day, but we don't ever care what our insides look like. Man, is that so true or what? You know, tonight I ran home in a fury to get ready. You can ask Crystal, have you left yet? Go on, it's time to go, have you left? I ran home in a fury to get dressed. So I'm like doing makeup as fast as I can. Jeff's asking me questions. I have a prop here. I'm like, Jeff, put this in there and do that over there. Cooper, quick, turn on the iron. Everything is going wild, right? So who knows what I look like when I'm finished. So before I leave, I have a full length mirror. I also have a bathroom mirror that I sat in the whole time, like doing the fan on my eyeshadow. Everybody do that? Doing all of that, mascara, fixing my hair. So I go stand before the full length mirror and I go, okay, so fix the shirt. Awesome, is that looking good? And then the shoes, are these the right shoes? I've got one shoe on one foot, the other shoe on the other foot. Is this good, Jeff, which one? Looking in the mirror, fixing my hair again. Okay, good, good to go. So I walk out the door. So I looked in the bathroom mirror. I looked in the full length mirror. Then I get in the car, I'm driving. I get a stoplight. I pop it down while I'm listening to some tunes. <laughs> Singing in the mirror. How do I look? Yeah. <laughs> Looking at myself again. Then I close it because it's time to drive. Drive again, pull into the parking lot. I didn't have lipstick on. Pull it back down again, do my lipstick. Fix it up, right? Close it. So that's it, right? Plenty. Then I walk inside. I go straight to the full length mirror in the green room. Look at myself again. Am I good? Do you know why? Because I'm just like you. I can't pass a mirror without looking because I want to make sure that I look okay. I don't want anyone to judge me for the way that I look. If my hair's not just right, if my lipstick isn't just right, if I don't have on the right outfit, I'm going to look and look and look and look. I'm going to use that phone before I come up here. I'm going to turn on the camera, see if there's anything in my teeth because I don't want to be judged. I want to look perfect for you because I want you to think that I've got it all together. I'm just like you. Do you do this? You do. I'll just answer for you. You totally do. So every day we look at ourselves over and over and over and over again. But how often do we look on the inside? How often do we look at our heart? See, we care so much about what everyone else thinks, but do we really care about what our creator thinks? Do we really care about what the one thinks that we're going to spend eternity with? Do we think what he thinks when he looks at us? We're too concerned with our outsides. We check it every day. But do we check our insides? 1 Samuel 16, 7 says this. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. He looks at your heart. The King of kings and the Lord of lords looks at your heart. He doesn't care what you look like. He doesn't care if you curled your hair just right. He doesn't care if you have the right shade of lipstick on to match your red sweater. And there isn't one that matches. I don't have one. <laughs> he doesn't care about your outsides. He looks at your heart. We're, we're, we're looking at the wrong thing. We're worrying about the wrong people and how they look at us. What junk is in your trunk today? What's in your heart? What junk is in your trunk today? I have a confession to make. My car gets messy sometimes. It does, it's just the truth. I want you all to think that I'm neat and tidy. I am at home. The car is much smaller, it's much harder to keep tidy. I've got two boys, a busy schedule. I have a large makeup bag with many, many products in it for when I'm on the go and didn't have time at home that sometimes falls out of the bag and all over the floor, any takers. And I have a love of Coke Zero. So at any given moment, my car goes from clean and tidy to looking like a mild episode of Hoarders. I don't know how it happens. 
It was just fine. And now it's just not. So let me tell you what I do. What I do is, because I want to make sure I have the right outward appearance. I don't like this. I don't like for my car to look messy or feel messy for that matter. So I'll pull out one of these. Anybody have these? I just pull it out and I just shove everything inside of it. <laughs> shove it in deep. Keep shoving. Shove it in. Whether it's trash, whether it's something that I used last week, whether it's my makeup bag, my exercise clothes, whatever it is. And I just tie it up. <laughs> and voila! My car is clean as can be. I just pop this right in the trunk. But see, it doesn't matter because, because the bag is contained. The bag's contained, so I've got all of these useful things in my trunk. Hey, Jeff filled this bag. I'm just gonna throw him under the bus. Jeff filled this bag for me as I'm getting ready, and he brings it, he's the cutest thing ever, and he said, I put some tampons in there because that's what girls have in their car. <laughs> He's so great. I don't know where they are in here, but I thought that was pretty awesome. Anyway, so what I do is I tie it up and I throw it in the back of the trunk, but it doesn't really affect anything. It makes my car look clean. And I have so many things in my trunk that are useful. And because it's in this little contained bag, it doesn't really affect anything. I still have my tire jack and my fix a flat and my exercise clothes and everything's still organized and good, but this is kind of over in the corner. It's fine. I don't look messy. I don't feel messy. I'm good. But see, this is exactly what we do with our hearts. What we do is, is we look a little messy. Our life looks a little bit out of control. So what we do is we just start getting our disappointments and our hurts and we put them in the bag. And we get that unforgiveness, how we're so mad, so mad it's eating us up for dinner. And we just put it in the bag, no one will know. And we shove it full and we pack it full and we pack it full until we tie a little bow on it wow. and we just put it in the corner of our hearts. Wow. We just put it in the corner and you know, our hearts are full of great things. God has planted so many great things in our hearts. We have gifts in there, gifts that he's given us. We have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. We have so much. We listened to Brittany's offering message and now we've got generosity in there too. Because Pastor Brittany just blew us away with that and, and we got a revelation from God and, and now that's in there and that's good. And this little bag, this little bag will be fine. You know, I'll just, I'll just tie it up. It's not gonna affect anything. That's what we do. That's what we do to our hearts. You may have hidden them, but he can still see them. He can still see the bag. Yeah. And you know, the big problem with putting things in a bag and throwing them in your trunk off to the side is if you don't clean that thing out, yeah. junk accumulates. Wow. It accumulates and it eventually turns over and starts getting into the rest of your things. There's the tampon. It starts getting with the rest of your things. The bad begins to take over the good without us even realizing. That wasn't our motive. When we stuck that bag in there, we weren't thinking, oh, my life's about to be ruined. <laughs> no, we just stuck it over there. We'll get it later. I'll take care of that. I'll forgive that person later, but I'm not doing it right now. Mm -mm. I am mad and I'm gonna stay mad. I'll just put it in the corner. 
I have not gotten that raise yet, and I've been asking you and asking you and asking you, and you haven't given it to me, and I'm mad at you, God. It's fine. I'll deal with it in a minute. I know that you're a great God. I know that you're a provider, but it's just going to stay in the bag. God, you said you would heal me, and you haven't. I've read scripture after scripture. I've stood on your word, and it's not happening. Can I really trust you? I'll just shove that in the bag too. And bitterness starts creeping out. Jesus told a parable about this. In Matthew 13, 24 through 30, it says this. Here's another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce, sorry, when the crop, crop began to grow and produce grain, produce grain, really enunciated there, the weeds also grew. Got that? Crop started growing, weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, sir, the fields where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did that come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull the weeds, they asked? No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, and burn them, and to put the wheat in the barn. See, this is the deal. We've got all this great stuff in our hearts, like I was just telling you. God has planted seed after seed after seed in there. He loves you. He wants the best for you. So he plants and he plants and he plants. He plants and he plants. But then that unforgiveness starts spilling out of the bag. That bitterness starts spilling out of the bag. That disappointment starts spilling out of the bag. And they grow up as weeds. And they begin overtaking those seeds that God placed in your heart. But the important thing is, if we'll open up our heart and take a look, if we'll examine our heart, we'll find those before they even begin to sprout. We'll start to see that disappointment. We'll start to see that hurt. We'll start to see that expectation that's been unfulfilled. And we can clean it out. Because if we don't, it begins getting intertwined in the good stuff. Because it's trying to choke out what God put in your heart. The enemy doesn't want you to fulfill your purpose. He wants to make you fail. So while you're sleeping, while you're having a great day, he drops those little things in. Do you remember what she said to you? Can you believe your boss said that about you? Can you believe your husband didn't tell you you look good today? How ridiculous. You worked really hard on yourself. You deserve better. It starts intertwining in the good stuff. And if it gets to be too long before we clean out all of that junk, it becomes painful. Just like that parable says, we have to start unwinding and unwinding and unwinding all of that hurt. That is not fun to experience. It's horrible. It's painful. So it's important that we search our heart always so that we don't have to get burned to get those things off. You know, sometimes God takes us through the fire. I don't want to go. I want to be purified. I want to be cleansed. But if I can just check my heart and get that stuff out, no need to be burning today. I'm good to go. So what's in your trunk? What's in there? Do you have one of these? Hold on. Do you have one of these in your trunk? A map? Well, what if you get out in the middle of nowhere and your LTE isn't working? What are you going to do then? A map. A map's a great thing to have in your trunk because what it does is it tells you where to go. It gets you where you're going. You can look on it and you can figure out what direction you should go in. Do you have a map in your trunk? Let me tell you what your map looks like if you've got junk in your trunk. See, you're supposed to guard your heart. 
you're supposed to guard your heart above all else because when the junk gets intertwined, it might be a little bit hard to see wow, the course of your life. Can you, I'm not really sure where to go. Because when the junk gets intertwined in your heart, what direction are you going in? I'll clean it up, whoever's freaking out. <laughs> a map. You know, that map is the same thing as the word of God. That map is your Bible for your heart. The Bible, it'll show you the direction that you should go in. It will paint the path so clearly. The Bible is your map. Know it. Learn it. Put it in there on the inside of your heart so you'll know exactly where to go in the times of trouble and the good times. You've got to hold on to that thing. Remember what I said it says in Psalms? Protect it. Hide it in your heart. The Word of God. Make sure that you've got a Bible because when you know it in your heart, it will determine your direction and that's the direction that we all want to go in. What else is in your trunk? How about these? Do you have these? So, these um, So these are hard to use if they're in bad shape and if the junk is all over them and intertwined and they're knotted and tangled, they're kind of tough to use. And they're kind of hard to reach where you're supposed to be going. And the kinks in them may make them not quite as effective. Your jumper cables. Your jumper cables is your connection to people. They're your lifeline. Madison, come up here. Madison and Alicia, come on. Like you're, like you're trying to run, win a race. Come on. <laughs> so you hold this end. Okay, and, and move back. Doot, doot, doot. And you hold these. Okay, got it? Positive on positive, negative on negative. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but see, the deal is this. This is a lifeline. And when you're connected to someone else that's a godly, great friend, this is your lifeline. See, the deal is this. When Madison's having a rough day or a rough week or a rough year, anyone? When Madison's having a rough time and she's connected to a good, godly friend, what begins happening is the power of God that's on the inside of Alicia begins to flow through this cable. It flows through and begins pumping into Madison. Madison who is dying, who is lifeless because life has gotten her down. She's entangled in the weeds and she can't see hope. But what happens is hope begins passing through this. Life begins passing through this. Confidence begins passing through this. And before very long, the power of God that's on the inside of Alicia has taken over, on the, has become the power on the inside of Madison, and she no longer is afraid to face what's in front of her. Thank you, girls. Jumper cables. Do you have them in your trunk? And are they a tangled mess? Or are they ready to function? Are they connected to a godly friend? It's vital. And you know what else is vital? It's vital to know who to connect up to. Because just like Alicia pushed those things at Madison, just like she, she showed her who God is on the inside of her, if these cables are connected to someone that's not a good influence, someone that's down in the dumps, misery loves company, someone that life isn't going their way, someone that doesn't believe in the God that you believe in, that same junk will start passing down the wire. 
And you'll begin to say, maybe he's not real. Maybe I'm not going to get that promotion. Maybe I should leave my husband. Maybe I'm never going to get married ever, even though I just keep believing that I am. Maybe I'm not going to get healed. Maybe this whole life is just a joke and I should stop trying. Who are your jumper cables attached to? Who are you connected to? When you're connected to someone good, they start to say, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. You are more than a conqueror, right? You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not below. You've got this, I'm standing with you. That's what a good connection does. If it's hooked to the wrong thing, do you know what happens? I remember when I was learning to drive, my dad would always say, you need to learn this now, this is real important. If you connect these up wrong, your battery will explode. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. My dad's awesome. He always looks after me. Your battery will explode. If you have the wrong connection, your battery will explode. All your fuses will blow, and the repair will, I mean, you'll be, almost be beyond repair. Almost. But the good news is our God can repair any situation. He can restore any relationship, and he can bring hope where there is no hope. Are you connected to anyone? Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Vital, vital, remember this. Next week, when you're sitting there going, what was it that Pastor Sonny was talking about? Vital. Who are you connected to? What else is in your trunk? I've got one more thing in here. How about a first aid kit? My husband is Jeff Kane. <laughs> Safety first. Really, it, it, he is actually like that, but this isn't even mine. I, I said, hey, Jeff. And I, I'm just really throwing him under the bus. <laughs> this is what I get to do. This is why he doesn't want to give me more women's meetings. I'm in this huge rush. I'm like, hey, Jeff, do you have a first aid kit by chance? And he goes, I'm not that bad, Sonny. Don't embarrass me. Okay, this, this is not his. A first aid kit. Do you have a first aid kit in your trunk? Okay. You guys are really chatty. I mean, like, I'm talking your ears off up here. I'm getting nothing back. A first aid kit. It's so important to have a first aid kit. Why? Because it'll help you out. It'll help you out when you're hurting. When things aren't going the way that they're supposed to go, it's this magical box with all of these great things in it. So, so in here are a lot of things. But in here is a cold compress. You know, if you've got something that's gotten hurt and you're not feeling very comfortable, it's important that you have a cold compress because it makes you feel better. It makes the swelling go down around that thing that hurts. You know, this is worship. Yes. Wow. Do you have worship in your heart? Do you have a go-to song or a go-to album? That man, when you're hurting, when life's really thrown you one, you can go and sing that River Wild song you can go in your car and close your eyes and begin singing or just breathe in the presence of God and healing begins to come to that thing that's swollen. It's vital. A cold compress. What about salve? Ointment. Healing ointment in your first aid kit. 
Do you have healing ointment in your first aid kit? Do you have promises of God that you stand on when things aren't going well? Do you have a go-to verse? For I know the plans that God has for me, plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Ooh, it's gonna be all right. Salve, the word of God, that scripture that you stand on. What about Band-Aids? These are really small Band-Aids. I should have checked this before I... It's good. We'll just... These are really small Band-Aids. <laughs> what about Band-Aids? Or gauze? There we go. Band-Aids or gauze? Who's covering you? Yeah, very, very Prayer. Prayer. Who's covering you? Who's covering your hurt places? Who's praying for you? And are you praying for yourself? Because you won't believe what happens when you take the bandage off. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes your circumstance. Do you have that in your kit? All right, what about tape? I'm just telling you before I find it. There's a really small... <laughs> if you're my friend, I need you to have a bigger roll of tape. <laughs> because tape is friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Who's holding you together? Very good. Very good. Who's holding you together? Very good. My friend Kim holds me together. When I'm having a moment, I go right in there. Or I pick up the phone. It's got to be a big moment. But when I have one, and she just pulls the tape out, wraps it around. It's going to be all right, Sonny. Hold it together. God's bigger than your circumstance. He, he is. Let me put some more on. That's why she needs a big roll of tape. Just keep wrapping. Keep wrapping it around. Tape. Friendship. Do you have that in your first aid kit? Last thing. Sanitizer. Antiseptic. Do you have that in your first aid kit? What that is is forgiveness. Cleaning. Cleaning that unforgiveness out. Back teen, remember that stuff when you were a kid? It burns. Forgiveness, it burns. I don't want to do this. No, mama, please don't. My grandmother had methylate. Anybody have that? Makes back teen feel like a cakewalk. <laughs> Forgiveness. Antiseptic. Antibacterial. Take that forgiveness out of your life. So your first aid kit, is it in your trunk? Is it in there or has the junk overtaken it and it's gotten so hidden that you've forgotten to replenish it? Because when you take the band-aids out and you take the salve out and you take the tape out and you take the gauze out and you take all of that out of your first aid kit, you're left with nothing. You have to replenish it. You have to be really diligent about making sure you've got those things in your first aid kit at all times. They're vital to your heart. Guard your heart. Your heart is so important. You can't get lazy about refilling your first aid kit. Proverbs 24, 30 through 34 says, I walked by the field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one with no common sense. I saw that it was overgrown with nettles. It was covered with weeds and its walls were broken down. Then I looked and thought about it and I learned this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, and a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Don't get lazy and caught without these essentials. The strongest walls and the strongest fences will come crumbling down if they become overtaken with weeds. Keep those things strengthened. Keep your first aid kit full. So, all right, here's your action items. Did you catch all that? Is it making sense to you? Yeah. So you're, you're doing the thing of, she's really talking about my heart, not the trunk. 
You got it, right? You know what you're supposed to be doing, the things that are vital, right? Because, because your future is big, church. Girls, your future is bright. Your future is so big that you would freak out if you knew what was coming. And your heart is what's going to take you there. So here's your action items. Number one, open your trunk daily. You can look in the mirror daily. Make sure your outsides look all right. That's pretty easy. Open your trunk daily, unafraid of what you'll find. Maybe you need to get a friend with you. I got to open this thing and it's not going to be pretty in there. Can you just let me talk through it with you? They'll have the tape out. That's what a good friend does. Clean out the junk. Number two, clean out the junk. Untangle the cables and get a clean map and keep that map safe. So one, open your trunk and look at it daily. Two, clean out the junk. Untangle the cables and get a clean map. Keep it safe. Hide it in your heart. And three, Find your first aid kit and replenish it immediately. Hey, you can do this, girls. You're in a room full of people on the same journey as you. They're standing right to your left and right to your right, left, right. They're standing with you. They're doing the same thing you're doing. They're stepping out in courage where they feel like they have no courage. You are not alone. You can do this, girls. Your life depends on it. I want to end with this. This is where we want to stand. This is what we want to believe. In Psalm 17, verses 3 through 5, it says this. I want you to close your eyes and listen to this. This is where you can stand, girls. You have tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I'm determined not to sin in what I say. I've followed your commands, which keep me from following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed on your path. I have not wavered from following you. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? What weeds are overgrowing those great things that keep you from standing before God, saying those beautiful words? What's in your heart? I want to give you the opportunity to come up and lay that junk on the altar. I've got pastors that are here to pray with you. But if you've got something that's sitting in your heart that you know it shouldn't be there, if I was speaking to you and you went, this is me, I've got to clean some of this stuff out. This is me. I've got to make a connection with a godly friend. This is me. I've got to disconnect before my battery blows. This is me. I've got to replenish my first aid kit. I want to give you the opportunity to come to the altar. You know what happens on the altar? Fire burns. Fire burns up the offering. Church, do you want to offer your junk to God today? Because he'll take it. He'll take it away from you and you'll never have to hold it again.